Hi there, this is Richard Gibbons. I am a senior product manager for Learn Ultra, and I've been working to introduce the new artificial intelligence features that were announced at Anthology Together in Nashville this summer. Now, it's important to point out that Anthology has been thinking about artificial intelligence as far back as 2018, when we brought institutions and academics together to discuss ethical AI in higher education. This led to us establishing a cross-functional working group to implement a dedicated trustworthy AI program, which includes several principles to which we align, including privacy, security, safety, humans in control, and fairness, just to name a few. Now, if you want to find out more about our approach here, please visit our Trust Centre where you'll find all of the information you need. We also formed a dedicated AI client advisory committee to understand the current need, the use and thoughts on the application of AI in higher education settings. We also took that opportunity to share our initial thoughts, ideas and designs and even eventually some live demo of features using AI. And we did that in order to gain feedback and steer our development in the right direction and making sure that we were meeting client use cases. Now, let me share some of those AI features that are available in Learn Ultra. So here we are in Learn Ultra. I'm logged in as an instructor and I've got access to my brand new course, Nashville Sound, the Evolution of Country Music. Now, if I go into this course, you can see it's completely blank and I've got to do some building here. So the first thing that I like to do is add a course image. So I'm going to edit the display settings and I'm going to click on the image icon and I can upload an image from my device. Um, but if I drop that list down, I've now got the option to add images from Unsplash, which is a royalty free online library of images. Um, that are very high quality. You'll also notice that based on what we know about the course, we're actually providing some categories for the search to go off. So with me doing almost nothing, I've actually got some very highly relevant um, results come straight back and I can actually scroll through these almost 7,000 images and find an appropriate one. So I quite like this one. I think it reflects my course quite nicely. So I'm gonna select it and click next. Now I can zoom into this image, I can zoom out, and I can also select the area of focus. Obviously we know that the course banner's a little bit on the narrow side, so I can um, select the area of focus, click save. That will process and give me a preview in the peak panel. Now once that's actually processed, we will automatically switch on the course banner option just here. And we'll also mark the image as decorative for alternative description reasons. Um, but I can override that should I want to. So I'm really happy with all of that. So all that's left for me to do is hit save. And within about 30 seconds of me being in this course, I've actually sourced a really high quality image as visual identity to this course. And that obviously flows back to the course card as well. Now, another area that I might want to do next is obviously look at the course content and provide some sort of structure for my students to work in here. So um, normally I would click add content and go to create and actually build out that structure manually. But I've now got the option to auto generate modules. So again, we'll take what we know about the course and we will make a suggestion of four learning modules initially um, for you as the instructor to have a look through. Now, you might want to refine this down, so we provide the ability to add a description into here. It could be a course description, a learning objective, or learning outcome. Uh, you can choose to provide a title prefix, so if you deliver in a weekly manner, then we can add week one, week two, week three, unit one, unit two, unit three onto here. You can also choose to include or exclude images. You can make the search results simpler or of a higher complexity, depending primarily on the type of students that you are delivering to. And you can also manipulate the number of learning modules that are returned in this search and then hit the generate button. But in this instance, just off the default settings, it's brought back four highly relevant. So we've got the introduction, traditional country music, evolution of country music, and what contemporary country music looks like as well. And we've got some really nice images against them. So I'm gonna select all four of those and I'm actually gonna add them to my course. So those are now on my course, which is really quite great. Now I can go in and individually edit each of these, so I can change the, the names, I can change the descriptions. I can also go and change the image that's associated. So if I just click on the image icon just there, I can upload from my device, I can get images from Unsplash, as you saw from the course banner. 
Um, but I've also now got the option to generate images. Um, and that is what these images actually are. They're generated images based on what we know about the learning modules and about the course. Um, and if I wanted to change this particular image, it's going to give me four new suggestions on what this particular image could look like. So I quite like this one down in the bottom right hand corner. So I'm going to select it and click next. I can obviously zoom in, zoom out, and I can change the area of focus should I want to. So I might prefer it to look a little something like that. Hit save, we'll see the preview. We'll mark the image as decorative, but you, again, you can override it if you want to. And then I can hit save. So I, I much prefer that image now. I think it adds more to the course. Um, so again, just within two or three short minutes, we've got that visual identity. We've got the learning module structure built out. We've amended one of the images on the learning modules. Now I want to actually go and build some. So now I've got an introduction to country music for my students with some nice imagery there, which is really smart. And then from here, I might want to check my students' understanding of what they've learned from this block of text. So you'll notice down in the bottom right hand corner, we've got the option to generate a question bank. So again, we'll take what we know about this ultra document and the course, and we'll actually try and generate some questions. Now, I can be very specific about what I'd like it to bring back for me. Um, Inspire Me is the, the, the default which means it will bring back a mixture of these question types, or I could just bring back essay questions or matching questions. Again, I can change the complexity just here, and I can also change the number of questions that are returned. I think we are returning four as default um, initially. And here we go. We've got four questions that have now come back. Uh, so we've got um, a multiple choice question just here. It looks like we've got a matching question as question number two and a matching question for number three. We've actually got an essay question for number four with an example of what a, cor a correct response would look like. Now, obviously this needs checking through because this is auto-generated content. So you need to check it through for accuracy. Um, but I quite like the look of these questions. I've read them through, I've checked them, I'm happy. I can add four questions to the question bank. So the question bank's been created. I can now stay in the Ultra document if I wanted to, or I can open up the bank. And from here, I can actually go into editing these questions. If I just want to refine them, tweak them, change the number of points, so on and so forth, I might just want to actually change the description. So this is a generated bank, and I might just want to remove the date off there um, to keep things nice and tidy. Uh, so my bank's there, it's ready to go when I want to use it within a test. Uh, so I can go back to the Ultra document now and I can close that down and go back to my learning module. So how about we now actually go and build out a test? So I'm going to click on create and I'm going to go to my test um, and I'm going to call this country music test. There we go. And I can obviously click the plus and go through my standard options. One of the things that you'll notice here is that we will auto, we've, we've got the option to auto generate questions. We'll take what we know about the test, we'll take what we know about the course, and we'll actually bring back four questions uh, relevant to what's going on in this course. Uh, and you'll see that we've got a matching question here. In fact, we've got lots of matching questions and an essay question at the bottom. So I'm just going to insert all of these. And again, we can use the options down the left hand side to refine these results somewhat. And we can just add these questions directly into the test itself. Now, if I wanted to pull on that question bank that we generated earlier, then I can absolutely do that. I can just go to reuse questions. I can select my question bank and I can actually select the questions that we generated and bring those in. So we've now gone very quickly from a brand new test to a test with eight questions within it. And they're completely um, varied questions. We're using different question types throughout, um, which is really, really quite nice. So I can select all of my test settings over to the left hand side if I need to do that. But in this instance, I'm happy with where we're at. So I'm just going to close that down at the moment. So within just a few short minutes, I've actually now built a course image. I've built out learning module structures. I've built out a nice introduction document with some text and some imagery. I've built out a test with some generated questions in it, both from a bank and directly from within the test. The other thing that I now want to do is actually go and build an assignment. So I'm going to click on create, I'm going to select the assignment option, 
and this is obviously going to be a country music assignment there we go um, and uh, from here I can obviously build out some description and tell my students what to do so it could be write me 500 words on country music just to keep things simple here so now that my assignment is set up and the students know what they've got to do, I want to actually just change my assignment settings. So I'll go through the normal process of setting up my uh, assessment settings. One of those um, settings will be around the grading rubric. I really like giving my students a grading rubric. I think it makes things really transparent and they know exactly what it is that I'm looking for when I come to my grading. So I'm gonna click on add grading rubric um, and I can manually create a rubric like I always have been able to, but now we've got the option to generate. Uh, now by selecting that, we will take what we know about this assessment and the course, and we will bring back a suitable rubric. Obviously off to the left-hand side, the instructor has got the ability to provide a short description, a learning objective or outcome or a topic, and that will help refine the, result, the results uh, even further. Uh, they can select the type of rubric that they would like to bring back, so percentage, percentage range, points, point range, um, and we can also um, increase or decrease the level of complexity and manipulate the number of columns and, and hit generate. Um, now, we have got a rubric that's come back, so this is based on content and analysis, organization, voice and style, and grammar and mechanics, and we can see that this is referencing country music and its evolution. And it's also telling us what exceptional looks like versus what needs improvement looks like. So it's done a really good job based on what it knows to bring back this rubric. So I'm going to click continue. It takes me through to the edit screen. So I'm actually going to call this country music rubric. Uh, and this is where I can start manipulating other, other items. So I can change the type of rubric that it is and I can go into the individual cells here and make relevant changes to the percentages or the descriptions and just refine this down more manually. So when I click save, um, that rubric is available for me to add onto this particular assessment. You can now see that that is there and by clicking on it, of course, I can view it. Um, so I'm gonna save that and my students will really like the fact that there's a rubric for them to refer to while they're building out their 500 word assessment on country music. So I hope that's a helpful run through of the features that we um, have introduced this summer. Um, these are all of our AI features. Uh, we hope you're as excited about them as we are. They're all designed to provide some efficiency to you as an instructor um, and allow you to spend more time with your students and doing the other work that needs to be completed. Um, so uh, we would love to hear your feedback on these features. Please find us at Anthology Together or please ping us after the event through the usual channels. Thank you so much for listening to this video.